Hello there, my big nerd herd. How are you doing? I myself feel great, and if you wonder why, it's strongly connected to why I haven't been uploading any videos for a while. To give you a clue to why, take a look at my new sweet desktop wallpaper here. I had the privilege to buy a Nintendo Switch with Zelda Breath of the Wild just before the Corona crisis started, and after approximately 90 hours of awesome playtime, I finished it. But enough about me, let's start with the tutorial. In the previous episode, we made it possible to pause the game by navigating to the home screen or the app's overview menu. But after reading a video comment from Steph Lynn, it was made clear to me that the app crashes for users with some specific API levels. Luckily, Steph had a solution to the problem, which we will explore and add to our project in this video. So first, we can navigate to the game activity and just run the app in the usual emulator that we have been using this far. We see now that we can go to the home menu and back to the app, as well as to go to the app's overview menu and back to the game without anything crashing. So far so good, but what do you think happened when I tried this out on my Samsung Galaxy S9 phone? And as you all know, this channel is all about interactive learning, so I would actually like you to just pause the video and then go right down to the comment section and write a real nice comment about what did you think happened when I tried to run the game on my phone. And uh, I will actually know if you paused the video or not, so don't try to trick me here, don't try that on me. I, um, I will not make any threats or anything, but I cannot guarantee your future safety unless you uh, write a real nice comment. And whenever in doubt, you can just leave a like as well. Like, you can even leave a dislike. I'm really all about attention. Anyways, so uh, I'll switch the target device to my phone and hit run. And don't get afraid here of the red button in the corner. It's just a shortcut to my phone screen recorder. And now we will do something that is uh, famously called monkey testing. I think it was Netflix that started with this. We will just start like a monkey. Hoo, 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 and we just press home, 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 hoo, hoo, app, okay. Uh, so now we can see that the game is crashing uh, when trying to pause it on my phone. And we also get an error message from the Surface view saying, exception configuring Surface. I hope no one wrote in the comment section that the app would not crash. I mean, what would be the point of going through all of this? If the app was working, maybe you thought I was just trying to prove Steph wrong and shame him publicly. You're safe this time, Steph, but watch out in the future. Okay, so now we can look at the error that we got. So you can look in the log cat and you will see that we got a java.lang.illegal thread state exception error, which arose when java.lang.thread.start was called. And if we follow the link to game loop .start loop at line 34, we see that here we call the start method on the thread class, which is the parent class for the game loop. And if we continue down the error tree, we see that the caller of this start loop method is the surface created method inside the game class on line 101. We once more follow the link and see that the start loop method is indeed called on the game loop object. Then, I actually have to admit that I don't really care about the rest of the error tree, because I know that my man, Steph, has a solution for us. So let's go to the comment section on my previous video and try to find his comment and be sure to give him a like. Then we can just copy and paste his solution in the surface created method. But I have a few things that I would like to modify in the if statement. Since we already have access to the surface holder through the method's input argument named holder, we actually don't need to store the surface holder in a new variable. And we don't actually need to add this class as a callback, since the holder still has a reference to the game instance. So the only statement we need in this if statement is the one which creates a new game loop object. So we can now write if game loop dot get state to get the current state of the game loop thread, and then we call dot equals to compare the thread state to the thread dot state dot terminated constant, which describes the state when a thread has been terminated. If this statement is true, we need to instantiate a new game loop object to get a new thread, so we can write game loop equals new game loop, and pass this as the first argument and the holder as the second. After reading up a bit on threads, 
it became apparent why we need to create a new game loop object when its thread has been terminated. Apparently, you can only run the same thread object once, and when the thread has been terminated, you simply need to create a new thread object to be able to start the thread again. So the solution is thus to create a new game loop object every time the game loop thread has been terminated, which is what happens when we call the join method on the thread when we pause the game. So that's it for this time. I'm sorry for not covering this problem in my last video, and I want to thank Steph again to point out this problem. On the positive side, I think we have all learned something valuable. Test your apps on all your target devices that you want your app to work on, because you never know what different problems you will get on similar but different systems. See you in the next tutorial where we'll learn how to control the player's direction with a second joystick, so that we can run in one direction and cast spell in another direction. And don't forget to like and subscribe.